Good morning, everybody. This is Ian Trevethan. I am the Education and Outreach Manager here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History, and we are continuing to bring the dome into your home. Hopefully, uh, everybody is doing well and healthy and happy. Uh, we're still here at the museum. We're still trying to bring you as much content uh, from the action here as possible. Um, there are fewer of us today, but those of us that are here have some exciting things to talk to you about. So I am excited today um, to be able to talk about some of the more unique things of the museum, uh, things that are not so fossilized. So um, I'm going to introduce, first of all, our not so fossilized naturalist on staff. Uh, this is Alicia. She's down here kind of wrestling with some friends. So Alicia, what's going on here? What are you doing? Well, right now I am trying to keep them back from crawling on my lap. Oh, uh, that's because you got the goodies it's on your lap. It's because I got the goodies. I like to pretend it's because they like me or something, but they just want the food. So we have our African spur thigh tortoises here. So the little one over here is pebbles. So if you've been here before, you've probably seen these guys. Lots of people think that they are fake because they don't do a whole lot unless you have food. Oh, they're really strong. <laughs> they're really strong. So this big one that Ian is just losing to is <laughs> Darius. So Darius is actually 20 years old, and we got him back in 2013. Oh. And Pebbles is 66. So Pebbles is a lot older than Darius is, but she is a lot smaller, so she's a lot easier to handle. So Pebbles only weighs about 45 pounds, where Darius weighs a good 150, especially during the winter when he's not eating as much. But during the summer, when they get to go outside and eat all the goodies, he weighs a lot more. Are you stealing food? He's totally stealing food. He's a big old meanie. That's in her mouth. Don't, Don't steal be it. Mean. Don't be a big meanie. Don't a so in. during the summer, they get to go outside and eat all of our grass. There are lawn mowers for us. I'm not putting that in your mouth. Here. I'll put it in your mouth. Just don't eat my fingers. There we go. Ugh. So, yes, Darius is our male and Pebbles is our female. So they get along quite well because they are not the same sex. But Darius, we actually got him because he was a big old bully to other males. You can't crawl on the I can't him. imagine that. I That's can't. amazing. You, a bully to other yes. males? <laughs> so I don't know if we can turn him around to show. Go look that way. There we go. This is I'll go for the camera. how we know he is a male. So he uses this to flip over other males. So that's actually why we got him, because he kept flipping oh, over hey. other males. What was that? <laughs> oh, there's eat it? something. Is it, is it edible? <laughs> they do like new and shiny things. Uh, you're they a like new and shiny thing, shoes. Rachel. Okay. But, yeah, that's pretty much them. They like to eat romaine lettuce, obviously, but they only get that about once a day. And besides that, they eat lots of hay. So pretty much all they do is sleep poop and pee a whole lot. So if you've ever seen our cage, it's nice and stained. Well, that is from their pee. So we spend about five, six times a day cleaning up their pee. So it's lots of fun and it smells wonderful. So do we want to do this? Not yet. Not. Do we want to do this yet? So we've got some other things here aside from our tortoises that we're going to talk. We also have our museum director, Dr. Reese Barrick here. Um, and, and today, obviously, the theme is turtles and tortoises, so... <laughs> he kind of got pooped on it, uh -oh. okay. Uh-oh, so, that happens in biology, it's juicy, yes, that's why I like the fossils. So here we have our albino red-eared slider ladybug. She's pretty popular around here because she just gets to roam around whenever we want to let her. So she is a red-eared slider, but she is albino, so that means that she just doesn't have any pigment to her skin. She doesn't have any melanin. And then we have Crush. So Crush is our ornate box turtle. He is a male. We've had him for about a year. He's not quite as loving as Ladybug is. But he was found in the wild, so obviously. But Ladybug, she was somebody's pet for nine years. And then they donated her to us, and we are very lucky because we love her. So She's very sweet. the tortoises love Reese's shoes. Pan down to Reese's shoes because this is, this is a work of art. <laughs> so you notice his shoes are green and yellow. Uh, I think it's a sports thing, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, but you can see that they're very attracted to his shoes, to those colors. So it seems that tortoises and turtles are attracted to bright colors. They are. Excuse me. As am I. You know. <laughs> and I, we have the same it's one of the thing, reasons why turtles and tortoises are my favorite animals in the world, our favorite group of animals, you know. We share that love of bright colors. Oh, is that, is that it? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I love them because they're nice and sweet and cute, but they are smelly. 
they do they can't be smelly but uh, <laughs> they, these things are, are kind of cool and they show something that's kind of fun um, you know there's lots of different kinds of turtles and turtles have been around since the Triassic so some of our earliest turtles are 220 million years old and the reason why they've been around for so long and are so successful is because of well the main thing about turtles they got a cool shell um, but a lot of the earliest turtles were, were aquatic turtles or semi-aquatic, um, much more kind of like uh, our, our red-eared slider here. And what's actually really kind of funny is that the, the ancestors, some of the earliest ancestors of turtles only had the bottom part of the shell, which we call the plastron. Um, and and uh, the carapace, which is the top part of the shell, actually evolved later. Um, so it's kind of nice and handy for burrowing or swimming and bouncing around off the bottom of rocks and things uh, in the water. But it's kind of a, a thing that you have to do with, with, if you have a shell like this, it's awesome for protection, right? So they really evolve, but they have to give up a lot in order to have a shell. So you can't move very fast. You can't either swim or walk very fast. Um, and you sort of have to eat anything that you can find. So most turtles are very much generalist. They'll eat pretty much anything that they can get, but they can't chase down anything to catch them very often. So they, they traded protection with these awesome shells for um, the ability to move very fast or to have a very high metabolism. So they have a very low metabolism. They don't have to eat a, a whole lot, although some of them will eat any but as generalists, they will eat anything they can get, pretty much any time they can get it, because they never know when they're going to get their next meal, oftentimes. But through time, their shells have really adapted depending on the environment that they live in. So our turtles that are more water turtles, they're semi-aquatic, which means they come on land to lay their eggs, uh, move between water holes, but they spend a lot of time in the water. So they have to be able to swim, so they have kind of a shell that's kind of flattened a little bit. Um, and they've got these cool feet that are kind of webbed, so they're really good for swimming. But yet they still have to be able to pull them into their shell for protection. So they need protection on land because every you know all kinds of animals are going to try to eat them because you know they can't escape because they're not very fast. Um, they need protection in the water. You got things like alligators and crocodiles that will eat them. So they have to have the shells really a protection for being on land or in the water, which is pretty cool. But uh, some of the things is their shells are very different depending on where they live. So a lot of water turtles have fairly flat shells. So I've got a really good question here. Where do you uh -oh. keep the turtles that you're holding right now? Because often people don't see them in public. Where do we keep him here at the museum? Yes, so he has a cage in the discovery room. He has a great big cage. He is not too much of a swimming turtle. He does like to go in the water on occasion, but mainly he likes to burrow. So is he so observable? In he the is observable. Room, so. Ladybug is not. So Ladybug lives in the back room with us. Um, she does have a little water cage of her own, but while we're here, she is roaming around the room with us. So she's always getting in trouble, going under stuff, but she does go to birthday parties and like school tours and stuff like that. So if people ever have those here, she is one of the main people, main people, main animals you get to see and she has really loved that way. The reason we don't have her on display is because she would need a pretty big water tank and we just don't have that right now. So we do have some other red-eared sliders on display, but they grew up together so they get along. They don't get along too much with her. So she does not get to live with them. But we are pretty happy to have her in the back room with us, so. <laughs> now Crush, on the other hand, is a kind of an interesting thing because he's got a little bit more of a dome shell and Crush is a box turtle which means that he basically spends all of his time on land. They don't swim very well at all and you see that their feet aren't quite as webbed. They've got pretty strong little toes but no real webbing so they don't swim much and uh, turtles that live on land mostly have bigger domed shells that's help for more protection against things that might want to eat them on land but interestingly these guys are very closely related to these guys. They all belong in the same family. Uh, and the one big difference, besides having more of a dome shell, that these guys that live on land have 
the ability to close their shell. If they get scared and they want to tuck their, their head in, they can close up their shell. So there's a little hinge line right here. So box turtles can close up their shell, um, which their cousins over here, the pond turtles, and uh, can't do. They have a nice solid shell all the way through. So even though they're fairly closely related, this is an adaptation for living mostly all on land while these guys are still uh, semi-aquatic and, and spend most of their time in the water, which is kind of cool. And a lot of people call the box turtles tortoises, but they're not really um, because they are more closely related to these pond turtles, even though they have a bit of a dome shell like the tortoises do. Now tortoises have, have a very dome shell because they live on land all the time and they got to be giants. And they've been uh, really around since the Eocene. So we're talking 50 or 60 million years. Um, but the earliest turtles that were semi-aquatic are over 200 million years. So really, at different times, turtles became more and more terrestrial, but we didn't have actual giant tortoises until the Eocene. So about we, have a, we have a good question that came in. So sure. Caden is asking, how old can a turtle get? So that kind of really depends. Our tortoises over there, they can live for about 150 to 200 years. Um, the smaller turtles, like this one and Crush over here, they usually live about 25 to 30, depending on how well they're kept. Obviously, if you're out in the wild and you have predators, predators are going to go for more for small turtles, not so much the big tortoises over there. So they can be eaten and not live as long. So. Probably the average length of time in the wild is like three to five years. Mm -hmm. But once they get big enough that they avoid or out of the size range of many predators, they can then live to be 15 or 20 years old. Awesome. Well, hopefully that answers your question, Caden. Thank you for sending that in. And again, we encourage, encourage anybody to uh, shoot us a question while we're live here. We will definitely try to uh, address any questions that come in during our live stream as best we can. Um, we're getting better at this. <laughs> All right. So if you guys have any questions you want to ask us while we're live, go ahead and ask them. Yep. Um, so, Reese, there is, you've got live critters here, which is interesting, but you've also got some not-so-live critters here. Do we want to talk about those? Sure. So what do we got going on here? So if if Rachel could manage to not trip over pebbles over here. Yeah, we've got a lot of moving objects over here, huh? We can see that there's some things that look kind of like pebbles sitting up here on some tables. And these are actually fossil tortoises. And these are... We have fossil tortoises, like I said, oh, from about 50 million years ago all the way to today. And some of them got to be really, really large. This is a small, medium-sized fossil tortoise. And then we've got a pretty large one over Hang here. Hang on, before we go on, one of the coolest things about this fossil is if you look right here, it's still got a head in there. That's a skull of a, of a tortoise. Here, let me see if I can lift it up so you can look at it a little bit better there. Can you see that? And to give you perspective, there's pebbles next to this particular tortoise. You see <laughs> that in reality, there hasn't been a whole lot of change in the type of shell. You can look at the shells. And if you go around the corner here, you can see a really big one. And you see, oh, all of a sudden, pebbles is not so big. And this is even bigger than Darius would be. I want to lift Darius but I'm compare. I'm not really sure that I want to lift Darius to compare, but you can see that tortoises were pretty large, and some of these guys are all from, they're from the Midwest. So tortoises were on land, and they were giant for many, many years, and they survived because they have these great shells. I'm going to put pebbles down now. <laughs> all right, pebbles. <laughs> that was impressive. I don't know many people that can hold a full-grown tortoise and That's maintain composure like that. <laughs> I personally would pass out. Um... So what, what have we got over here? So we've covered sort of the movement of sort of semi-aquatic turtles to land in the, and the evolution of tortoises. But there are also the movement of turtles that into basically staying aquatic all the time. And so what we have here is the skeleton of a marine turtle. So by the time we get to the, the Cretaceous, we have hundreds of different species of marine turtles. And marine turtles are really awesome. This is what's called a protostega. It comes from our western interior seaway. And they're pretty cool because they do the other thing. Because they're becoming more aquatic and they need to swim better, 
Well, they can't really pull their legs into their shells very easily, and they want to get lighter so that they can swim better. So a lot of turtles that are marine turtles get their shells to be thinner and lighter, and some of them, like leatherback turtles today, or protostegas, you see that their shell's not solid anymore. So they actually become a little lighter, and that way they become better swimmers and faster swimmers. Um, so the movement into the ocean sort of changes the, the look. And if you look at this, that's a pretty flat shell. So the more the uh, turtle swims, the flatter the shell gets. And the more time they spend on land, the bigger the dome gets. So this is a cool protostega, and this is a, a skull of a modern marine turtle. And you can see they look fairly similar. In many senses, turtles have not changed a whole lot in a lot of their basic biology. And once they evolve to a, a particular system, ocean, on land, or rivers and ponds, they can stay pretty, pretty stable um, for millions and millions of years. And that's, the shell is the key to their success. And that makes them awesome and lots of fun and gives them a chance to develop different personalities. So, uh, I don't know, I just think turtles are, because of the, the, the adaptability that their shells give them, have made them successful for hundreds of millions of years. And really the only thing that has been tough for turtles over all of this time, they went through several of the largest mass extinctions in the history of the planet survived really well because of their shells and their metabolism and their generalist diets. But the only thing that's really been a problem for them is humans because once humans came around, all of a sudden we liked, they're easy to catch. So we have giant tortoises on islands all over the, the, the oceans and the Galapagos turtles uh, and the ones from the Aldabras are the largest tortoises in the world. But uh, there's not so many of them around because early sailors would find them and they were slow, so they're easy to pick up and throw on a ship and have stable meat for a long time. So they got eaten a lot. And so it's really humans that have, have been the biggest problem for turtles Turtle in soup. 220 million years. So one of the things that's unique about the Sternberg Museum is that we do have all of these live animals sort of coupled with the fossils, their, their distant ancestors. Why did we do that, Reese? Why, <laughs> why did you decide to not just be satisfied with presenting ancient history? Um, why did you push to do something that is kind of out of the box like that? Well... The thing is that a lot of times growing up, when you go to museums, you would find cool fossil galleries, and they would be over on one side of the museum, and then you'd have maybe some stuffed skins or some bones of modern animals on the opposite side of the museum. And there was a big disconnect between people connecting that fossil animals and modern animals are connected. And evolution is something that's not just happening in the past, and we have fossil animals but it's still continuing today. So what I really wanted to do was bring live animals in and put them with fossils so that people, we could make a connection of animals from the past to the animals that are still around today. And we could talk about the processes that got animals here today and connect them to their past history. And it's a really cool way um, to sort of see a living history of our planet. And it's also kind of cool because live animals have a little more personality and they're fun to come back and see it again and again. Cool. Uh, oh. We have a question. We have a, we have a question. All yeah. right. It says, what's the biggest tortoise known to man? Any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> biggest tortoise. The biggest tortoise. Would that be the Galapagos? If it's living, it's the Galapagos. Yes, it's the Galapagos. I don't know if there's anything bigger than that before. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, there, there's some pretty darn big sea turtles out there, like Archelon, that, that is a fossil turtle. Yeah. For, for, for the largest turtle is actually a turtle that's from about uh, 35 to 40 million years ago in the Oligocene that is actually was a freshwater turtle from South America. And oh, it's didn't, called, didn't they just discover that It's recently? called Stupendemis. 
Stupendemis. It sounds like a it's like, like a st- spell from Harry Potter. It's stupendous. <laughs> it's stupendous. All right, I just geeked yes, out. Sorry, guys. Anyway, it, it's it's larger than a VW Bug, and Archelon was a marine turtle that was just about that the same size, but it lived in the ocean, so it got really large because it lived in the ocean. It's actually very closely related to this guy, but Stupendemis lived in fresh water instead of the oceans. And the reason why it got that big, and it's interesting why things get really large, is the largest crocodile on the planet, or very oh. close to it, also lived at the same time in the same waters in South America. So you have to be stupendous to get away from that, <laughs> that super croc. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. And so the Archelon, which Ian mentioned, that's this rel- relative of this guy that's about three times bigger than this, got really large because, you know, they had to live with giant mosasaurus, mosasaurus like tylosaurus yes, absolutely we have another question why are turtles always green or brown well they're they're not we've got <laughs> <laughs> we just showed you a white one that had red stripes but yes that is usually i think the um the the general rule is they tend to be earth tones yeah, it's gonna depend mm-hmm. on where they live. depending on where they live they're going to be some you know, there's some really cool marine turtles that are olive colored and have, but it's still browns and greens for the most part. But you do get uh, lots of yellow stripes and things like, uh, does yeah. Crush have yellow he's, stripes? He's got red. He's got red stripes. But you get some yellows and reds to go with the greens for some of the, the other colored markings. Um, because everybody knows that racing stripes makes you faster. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, yes, greens, browns, and yellows with some reds. I have a question personally because I get this all the time. Kids always wonder: Do turtles leave their shells and then go find bigger shells? Ah. So can you explain to them that their shells are a part of their body? Mm, How? That would be difficult. Well, it, it's actually kind of cool, and you can almost see this here: is um, turtles don't just—they're not like uh, crabs that that molt their shells. Um, they're actually. Shells are sort of part of their vertebra. Here's this is their vertebra that go along here, and their ribs come off of their vertebra. And here you can see the, these ribs become a little bit expanded. And in most turtles, you get these expansions of ribs, and you get these bones that are attached to the ribs, both underneath the plastron and on top in the carapace, and they all combine together. So that the the shell of a of a turtle or a tortoise is actually a part of their skeletal system, part of their body. They can't leave it. So if we've got any kiddos or even parents at home that want to sort of use your own body or your own skeleton to kind of figure this stuff out, so this is your back. So everybody touch your back, figure out where your backbone is. And you can sort of feel it running up and down. And then you can feel where your ribs connect to your backbone. That's exactly what's going on here. So this is the turtle's backbone, or the, yeah, the turtle. And then this is where its ribs connect to its backbone. And for us, our ribs sort of come around and cover our really important stuff. And for the turtles, they sort of expand out, and then they have sort of this underneath uh, plastron type of thing. And what's interesting, though, is turtles oftentimes, and you'll, if you fight, play with a lot of turtles, on top of their bone on their shell, there is um, basically what is essentially our, a fingernail. It's a keratin material that goes over the top of their bones. And you can see all of the different shapes here. Um, it's, that's really, uh, sometimes if they're not in good shape, they will flake and lose that off. And, but, and that's the, what covers and protects the bone because they have to have their bones protected. So what you're really seeing here is not the bone, but it's essentially the turtle's um, fingernails on top, of, on top of the bone. And they don't match up exactly with the bone. They kind of overlap a little bit. But it's kind of cool because you can see even the different growth lines um, in the fingernails. There's growth lines in the bone, um, which work pretty well to sort of match up sort of annual growth in, in turtles and tortoises, which is pretty cool. But he's kind of cool. Or she's kind of cool. This is Ladybug. Ladybug is internet famous now. One thing that's really kind of fun, another interesting cool fact, is that for most turtles... The females are bigger than the males, much bigger than the males, oftentimes. 
So any aquatic turtles or box turtles or marine turtles, the females are bigger. But it's the one place where it's the exact opposite is the tortoises. So uh, Darius is giant compared to pebbles. So they completely flip-flops, right? So tortoise, uh, turtles that evolved into tortoises on land completely changed the distribution of sizes between genders. So boys are much bigger than, than girls in tortoises. Girls are much bigger than boys in turtles. And all tortoises are turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises. <laughs> and that is your thought for the That's day. That's the thought for the day. <laughs> so uh, and, uh, is there any, one, one more, more question. question? All right. It asks, what do turtles eat? What do turtles so, eat? That's a good question. That'd, that'd be a question for me. There that, is, that is a wide-ranging question. I okay. Think. So, yes, it is wide-ranging because, as Reese said earlier, they're going to pretty much eat whatever they can get their little faces on because they're not going to be able to chase much. So, the ones that we have here, pebbles, I mean pebbles, yes, your pebbles, this is ladybug. Ladybug pretty much eats mice, fish, and on a very rare occasion, I'll get her to eat fruits and vegetables. But she knows she has meat. She wants to eat meat. Darius and Pebbles, however, they only eat vegetables or grasses or stuff. I about put her down. Yeah. That would have been fun. So they eat romaine lettuce and hay, and they can also eat other stuff like cucumbers and stuff like that. But they do not eat meat. And if they did eat meat, it would probably kind of mess up their digestive system a little bit. Um, they've already peed all over the floor since we've been in here, and it's kind of Gross. smelly in here. <laughs> But what's really interesting is our ornate box turtle, Crush. He can also eat meat and vegetables, but he needs to eat more vegetables than he does meat. Otherwise, his shell won't grow right. So it'll kind of be curved and stuff like that, which is actually pretty common when people have pet turtles. They don't quite get the right nutrition, and then they curve or they go really sharp or something like that. So it's always important if you want to have a pet turtle or tortoise, you know what they have to eat. But they also eat fish out in the wild, worms all sorts of insects and stuff like that, and as well as just like wildflowers and stuff like that. These guys love dandelions. It's their favorite thing. Too bad we don't have too many of them. So, any other questions? I think that about does it. All awesome. Right. So, we will be back later this afternoon at 2 p.m. Central, and we are gonna continue our exploration of some of the live animals we've got at the museum. Uh, and this, this afternoon, we're going to talk a little bit about our rattlesnakes. So be sure to tune in again at 2 p.m. And we will be looking for you again. We hope everybody is making the best of the situation. Uh, we will be here for you as long as this thing continues. So uh, again, feel free to send us any questions, even if, if you catch this and we're not live, we'll be glad to look through those questions and try to answer them as best as possible. So uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Stay healthy and happy. We'll see you at 2.